gone. So lucky I'm a bit late. Let me see. I planned this um, this live session for um, 22:15, which is quarter past 10 over here in Holland. But um, my 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 batteries is acting like a bitch, man. Telling you, my battery is acting like a bitch. It doesn't charge good, you know. And this is quite a big lesson. You know, it's gonna take some time. You know, it stays at the same percentage, man. You know, so Yahara to saw most I willing. You know, it will last while the battery is plugged, uh, the, the charger is plugged in. You know, uh, you know, but but like always, I want to say, Kala Laim, Yahawah Ba'asham, Yahawah Shai, Ba'asham Raka Kudash, Shalawam to the elect. Peace and blessings, double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of course. You know, and today, we're going to do something else, man. Um, and the reason is um, there was a, uh, an uh, encounter in the camp, you know, brother, that's still, um, you know, in crooked ways with this truth. He, um, he came with the book of Enoch. And if you observe what Esau is doing nowadays is um, Esau is really pushing this book of Enoch. Because all kind of Bible apps all of a sudden have the book of Enoch in it. The book of Jubilee, you know, uh, the book of Yasher, which these books are not books that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai set up for us to use, you know. Yes, there was a book of Enoch, but that's not the book that they have right now, you know, which is supposed to be this book. Written by, or tra it says translated by. R. H. Charles, you know, which they say it comes from the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, um, through the spirit, man, the most I put me upon this book uh, to, to read a, a couple things to see what it is about. And, you know, after the first couple chapters, I'm like, man, this is this is the biggest garbage I ever read, man, you know, to be honest, you know, but. I'm not only going to speak like that concerning this book. I'm going to basically come with all kinds of contradictions and things that really don't make sense at all. You know, it's good that I have my iPad over here because we're going to have to do some calculations concerning the timeline that this book of Enoch claims to be in. You know, and, and years that people supposed to live concerning this book, which is contrary to the Bible. So we're going to start off with, um, you know, and if there are any difficulties, you know, if the sound is bad or the music, there's some jazz music on the background. If it's too loud or whatever, just um, respond in the comment board if you have questions. Um Feel free to um, to um, jump up in the comment board and ask things, you know, concerning this book or concerning the lesson, you know. Um, so uh, let's start off, man. So this is the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch. Keep that in mind. So we're going to go to the book of Enoch. Um, chapter 106. Starting at verse 1, it says, And after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him and bore a son, and his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose, and the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool and his eyes beautiful. Now, Enoch this is Enoch talking about his son Lamech. It's like it. This is Enoch talking about um, um, uh, his grandson Lamech getting a son, which is Noah. You know, uh, uh, and Noah supposedly supposedly con uh, uh, conformed this book. It's a so-called white man. This book describes Noah as a so-called white man, 
which out of Noah came basically all the nations upon the planet Earth, which we know that if Noah was a so-called white man, then how, how did these dark, dark races come upon the planet Earth? Like the Canaanites, you know, uh, the, the Hamites, you know, people like Ethiopians, uh, people like um, 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 Somalians, people like um, uh, Sudanese, very, very dark-skinned people. If, if Noah was a so-called white man, how did these uh, 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 skin colors, how can these skin colors be in the earth at this moment? Because Noah, we, we come from, from Noah, man. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You know? It could only be the way, uh, other way around. If Noah was a dark-skinned man, and one of his sons was a so-called albino, albino, you know, only then you would have, you know, in, in, in uh, between um, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, you would have possibly have some some so-called white um, skin color. But here it describes that Noah, it says verse 2, and his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. So it even says that his body is red. So what, so, so what? You, you have to think about Esau's craftiness. What is Esau trying to do with this book, man? He's trying to say that, that Noah is a so-called white man. Which we say so-called white man because he's actually red. So that even that they have backed up in this Bible. Because it says, And his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. You know when these Edomites start running a bit? They turn red. Hey, y'all, hey, call the law, y'all, but I'm shy. My battery, you know, for now, is staying cool, cool cat. So we continue. Um, so it's, so this book says that Esau, you know when Esau starts running a bit, he gets red and shit. This is what they described that Noah was. And the hair of his head was his, uh, uh, and his long locks were white as wool. You know how these, uh, um, you know how these um, albinos have um, white hair, right? Shalawam makia yahaw bashim yahshay bashim raka kadash brakata. You know how these uh, albinos have um, have white hair, right? Let me see. Wooly albino hair. Look at this ghost, man. It's a ghost, man. You see? So supposedly, Noah's hair was like that. White and wooly. According to this book. Um, so they, you can see that they are describing an albino. And his eye is beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, and opened his mouth, and conversed with Yahweh of righteousness. And his father Lamech was afraid of him, and fled, and came to his father Methuselah, and said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from diverse from." And unlike men, and resembling the sons of, of God, of the God of heaven. And his nature was different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious. And it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels. And I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth. Okay, so, you know, quick summary. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not going to read this again because this is, this is pure garbage, man. You know, I got a couple of points. Um, so so they're describing Enoch. Enoch is describing his grand-grandson because the son, of, the son of Enoch is Methuselah. The son of Methuselah is Lamech. The son of Lamech is, is Noah. 
Am I having that right? Yeah, the son of uh, uh, Methuselah is Lamech and the son of Lamech is Noah. So Noah is being described as an albino man in the book of Enoch, an albino man, which men that have common sense in this truth, they know that, that that's pure garbage. I don't even have to debunk that, you know? That's just common sense. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, you know, out of those those three men, all the nations came, you know. And if the father of those three men is a so-called white man, how do you think that Shem, Ham, and Japheth would have looked then? That doesn't make any sense with the dark-skinned nations being upon this earth right now, which actually all the nations were dark-skinned ex uh, uh, except for Esau, man, because Ishmael had a son. And his son was named Quadar, which Quadar means dark skin. You see, Quadar means dark skin, man. So why would the Arab Ishmael call his son dark skin? Because he was. <laughs> so, yeah, like I was saying, so Esau is being described as a so-called white man. And then Lamech was running away from his son because he looked like a so-called white man. He looked like an albino. He was running away from his son, went to his father, told his father and said, this is not my child. It's probably, uh, 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 my wife probably had sex with, uh, with the angel, which we're going to go into that uh, 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 um, also because the Bible says angels don't have sex. So we're going to go into that also proving that that's completely off and more points wherein it is being um, uh, described in the book of Enoch. So um, uh, Enoch, um, it's like Noah being an albino, Lamech running away from his son for his looks and saying that um, his, um, his wife had sex with an angel, probably had sex with an angel. And now comes the point what I want to go into, which is Enoch writes about how his grand-grandson looks but according to the Bible, Enoch was long gone, man. Enoch wasn't even on the scene anymore when Noah was there. <laughs> so that's like, man, I went into some cal calculations, man. I, hey, and I don't like calculating. But I had to, man, because so I, there was something fishy about this whole thing. So let me see where uh, my iPad, you know. Let me see from check my battery. The battery is going down slowly. Hey, but y'all wrap this out. Stays up, man. I'ma check it every now and then to see uh, if we um, we still holding up. You know, it's still charging, but we live, so it's gonna it's not gonna charge. Okay, so let's go to the book. The valid book, the Bible, the book of our forefathers, the book of prophecy, the book of the law, statutes, and commandments. And let's see, um, we're going to go to, um, we're going to go to um, Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, starting at verse 21. It says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked. You can't. And Enoch walked with the Most High after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years and Enoch walked with the Most High and was not and he was not for the Most High took him and Methuselah lived 180 and seven years and begat Lamech and Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 780 and two years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Methuselah were 960 and 9 years, and he died. And Lamech lived 180 and 2 years, 
and beget a son. Now this, and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us, because Noah in the Hebrew is Nacha, which means comfort. This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which Yahweh had cursed. Okay, now step by step, we're going to start with this. Enoch, it says in, it says in um, Genesis chapter 5, verse 23, and all the days of Enoch were 300 60 and 5 years. So keep that in mind. 360 and 5 years. This, uh, and for the Akiam that are watching, man, these are things you need to make notes, man. Because you're going to have guys that uh, that want to come with the book of Enoch. And then you're going to have, you got to have your, your spiritual gun loaded, man. You know, your spiritual gun loaded. And if they see you actually coming with their book, just, just to cut them up with, Hey, that, that makes makes you even, uh, an even stronger teacher, man. So keep that in mind. Enoch lived 365 years. So if we go, if we want to calculate how many years later Noah came on the scene, you have to check out at what age um, people were born. So the son... Of, uh, of Enoch, the son of Methuselah, the son of Lamech, until Noah came. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use the information that we got. So it says Enoch was 65 years old when he begat Methuselah. So we type in 65 years and beget sons and daughters. Uh, and Enoch walked with the Most High, and he was not for the Most High. Took him, okay, now Methuselah. And Methuselah lived in 103 hundred eighty and seven years and beget Lamech so um, you add the age that Lamech was born with the age that um, that uh, Methuselah was born you know so now we are on 225 and Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 782 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and 9 years and he died. And Lamech lived in 180 and 2 years and begat a son. So when Lamech lived 182 years, then he begat a son. So we add 182 years also because this is the son that we're looking for. Was Enoch in the time of the uh, of Noah? Yes or no? So 182. Damn. So 65 years old. Um, Enoch added with 187 plus 182. Okay. So that is after the birth. After the birth of. Um, after the birth of um, Enoch, 443 years later, Noah came on the scene. Okay, 443 years, uh, 34, 434 years, Noah came on the scene. But wait, we just read that Enoch was 365 years on the scene. But Noah came 443. 34 years later. So if we want to know how many years Noah came later, you just do 334 minus the time that Enoch was on the scene. 365. So Noah came 69 years later than Enoch. So Enoch, how is Enoch able to describe his grand grandson Noah, if he wasn't there yet, and uh, uh, anymore, how could he have written down the description of his grand grandson Noah if he wasn't there? He was already gone. The Most High already took him away. That's the same 
as um let's say that's the same as um um let's say isaiah describing john the baptist like yeah he uh he had on a camel garment camel's garment you know uh he had uh white woolly hair he had a long beard he never saw him so he cannot describe him you know he can he can say like there's gonna come a man that is gonna preach in the wilderness that's prophecy of course that's possible but he was Enoch and the book of Enoch is completely describing his son like he sees him you know because here it says and after some days my son took a wife it's like my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech so he's like yeah this is what happened my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech this is like he was there on the scene but according to the calculations and according to the Bible Enoch wasn't wasn't there anymore you see, Noah came um, 69 years later when, uh, uh, after the, the parting of, um, of Enoch into the heavens. So that's the first contradiction, you know, plus um, uh, um, Noah being a so-called white man. That's a contradiction in itself, you know, I don't even have to go into that, you know, it's, it's plain and simple. You know, and um, now it says, so So let me go back to the book of Enoch where, where it said that Lamech was running away because that's an inter interesting point too. This is um, Enoch chapter 106, verse 6. Um, let me start at 5. And he said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, diff diverse from, from an unlike man and resembling the sons of of God of heaven and his nature is different and he is not like us and his eyes are as the rays of the sun and his countenance is glorious and it seems to me that he is not sprung from me but from the angels and I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth you know so they are mixing truth with lies because a wonder did appear upon the earth when Noah was there you know, so they're trying to mix truth with lies just to make you feel comfortable with this book. You know, so here it says that Lamech thought that um, Noah uh, came from the angels and was not his seed, which that's off. You know, and then just to go deeper into this book, chapter 15 let me see, because this book is written with um, these Roman numerals. They, they completely bugging me out if I if I'm reading that Roman numeral nonsense. Anyway, this is um, um, Enoch, the, uh, the book of Enoch, chapter fifteen, starting at verse one. And he answered and said unto me, said to me, and I heard his voice. Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man. And scribe of righteousness, approach hither and hear my voice, and go, say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee into intercede for them, you should intercede, you should intercede for men, and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left the high holy and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives? And done like the children of the earth and begotten giants as your sons and though ye were holy spiritual living like uh, living the eternal life you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women and have begotten children with the blood of flesh and and as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood as those also do who die and perish so here speaking about the angels whose habitation is the heavens you know because in the bible it also speaks about the sons of god having lain with the children of men in revelation chapter 6 so they trying to link this with uh slakia they trying to link this with genesis chapter 6 which genesis chapter 6 is talking about 
the, the, the sons of the Most High being the man upon the earth, man. The chosen seed, the, the chosen lineage. You know? And the, and the giants over there doesn't mean that they were extremely tall. They were men of valor. They were men of honor. Just like Mike Tyson. He was a giant in the game. Um, uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather. He's a giant in the game. Michael Jordan. He's a giant in the game. He was a giant in the game. You see? So their status was very great. You know? So they say it's the same as this. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 2, that the sons of, of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And Yahweh said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be in 120 years. So Yahweh is already explaining these men that did this act. They were the sons of God, but they was flesh. They were flesh. They were, they, were, they were men of the earth, but they were called the sons of the Most High, you know, because the Most High was dealing with them. Um, yet his days shall be in 120 years. So what, what happened that, uh, what happened after we laying with these, these, these different uh, uh, women of the children of men, our power went down. We, be, we instead of, look at them. Um, Look at the age of Methuselah. Methuselah became more than 900 years. I believe 969, if I'm correct. Uh, 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 men became around 800, 900, you know, 700 years old. But the Heavenly Father said, after he done this, you have basically diluted, diluted yourself so now you're gonna you're not gonna be 800 900 years old anymore you're gonna go down it's gonna go down and it's gonna be like 120 it's the same as you have a bottle of liquor you have a bottle of liquor and let's say you put some uh, let me think let me see you mix it yeah, you you um you you have a half bottle of whiskey and you put um you put juice with it, orange juice. Okay? Then you pour it out until you have a half bottle again and you put juice with it again. That whiskey is not going to be strong as it was in the beginning when it just was just only a half bottle of whiskey because you diluted it. You know? That's the same thing that we did. So we lost our power. So the sons of the Most High here in Genesis chapter 6 is talking about us. Because like the book of Jude says, this is Jude chapter 1, verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. You see, so the everlasting chains that, that these men the sons of God, which were already on the earth, are, are, are delivered to, is this, are these bodies, man, that die, you know, that are corrupt. Because what did the Most High say? Where's my apocrypha? What did the Most High say? Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1. Uh, what was it? Chapter 2. Yeah, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. For Yahweh created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. You see, that's why we were the sons of the Most High, man. The Most High was, was dealing with us one-on-one, -on -one, you know? We, 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 we was created to be immortal. But then, through the sin of, uh, uh, of um, uh, uh, Adam and Eve, we, we all died. Basically, through the sin of the woman, because really it was the woman that sinned. But Adam listened to his wife, and in, uh, in that way, sin came into the world. 
you know unlike uh, uh, unlike uh, what this book says because this book says some 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 crappy shit which which most are willing i can can go into also but um we but because we laid down with these women basically our our life force and our strength was diluted until how we are right now you know confusion of faces among us you know you know we don't have our full strength anymore and we are reserved into the change of darkness until the day of judgment so when the day of judgment comes then are we going to get our, uh, our our extraterrestrial bodies again bodies that can can't die uh, 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 bodies that uh, uh, that uh, um, don't get sick women that that um, that uh, will never be barren, not able to get children. These women will be so fruitful, man. Hey, babies will be popped left and right, man. But that that's an uh, that's another topic, you know. So it's talking about us, but here in this book, it refers it refers to angels wa called watches here, and go say the watches of heaven. You see, who have sent thee to intercede uh, for them. You see, so here it's described that they did something which only the children of men would do, which is have sex. This is verse 4. Um, the book of Enoch, chapter um, 15, verse 4. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women. And have begotten children with the blood of flesh. So this is clarifying that these watchers were not of flesh. But still they had sex. Which is not possible. Uh, with the blood of flesh. And as the children of man have lusted after flesh and blood. As those also do who die and perish. So this book describes angels having sex with, with people. Which the Bible the Bible describes that that's not possible. Yahweh Shai describes that. What? What? The book of Enoch exposes lies of Esau trying to whitewash. Yeah, exactly. If they take the form of men, why not? Okay, if they take the form of men, why not? Okay, let's see. Because angels can, angels can let you think that they are doing something which they can't. For example, in the book of Tobit, the angel was sitting and acting like he was eating. Meanwhile, angels don't eat. But he portrayed the, the, the image to Tobit that he was eating, but he was, not, he was not eating. He was just sitting there. Angels don't have to eat. Angels don't have sex. So angels cannot procreate with, with men that is flesh. Because you have different kind of flesh, but we're gonna go into it. No, no problem, man. I see we have we have uh, we have a book of Enoch believer on the comment board. That's good. The fallen ones are different, bro. Let's go into it. No problem. No problem, man. This is Matthew. Matthew chapter twenty-two. Matthew chapter twenty-two. Let me start at um, let me start at uh, twenty three. The same day came to him the Sadducees. The Sadducees came to Yahushai, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, "Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother." Now there were with, with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the women died also. Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven, for they all had her? 
So the Sadducees is asking y'all, Shai, like, so, okay, in the heavens, in the spiritual realm, who is going to be with this woman? Because seven men had her. Who's going to who's gonna get her then? You know? Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of the Most High. For in the resurrection, which re is back, and uh, 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 surrection, which which you know, we all know the word erection, you know, which means to go up, go back up, because every spirit goes back to the heavenly Father. So you go back up, you know, you re erect, you go back up. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of the Most High in heaven. You see, so angels. So angels don't marry. According to this scripture, angels don't marry. Okay, nah, angels aren't given into marriage. Yeah, you see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the brother is, is basically going in on, on this dude. Uh, so now, but are as the angels of the Most High in, in, uh, in heaven. So what does marriage re uh, resemble? Let's get one quick scripture that proves that. This is Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. Genesis. And you know what the funny thing is? If this book of Enoch is so special, why, why aren't you quoting out of it then? Why aren't you pulling scriptures out of the book of Enoch then? Go try and look up the book of Enoch. Uh, uh, to read it online, you 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 will get very less uh, less websites, man. You know, Esau even knows, man. But nowadays they're trying to push this book of Enoch so much. So you know, it's 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 up to the man of the Lord. It's up to GMS Great Millstone, like we always do. We 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 bring out the word, man. We bring out the truth. You know. So what does marriage resemble? This is Genesis chapter twenty-five. 24, so like in Genesis chapter 24, going straight to the point, verse 67. This is the Old Testament, man. This is Genesis chapter 24, verse 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So what 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 was what is this marriage? How did Sarah became Isaac's wife by bringing her into her tent and having sex with her? Which sex? The word sex comes from the the Greek, you know, which means to cut. You know, so he basically uh, 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 popped the cherry, and she became his wife. There was no going on the knee, you know going to the church or whatever he had sex with her and and and, and she became his wife so what did jahawah say uh, matthew chapter 22 matthew chapter 22 verse 30 for in the resurrection need they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of the most high in heaven because the angels of the most high don't have sex and we just we just read what marriage is, so they don't marry. That means that they don't have sex. And you're not telling me to stay in the Old Testament because we believe in the whole book. We believe in the whole book from Genesis to Revelation. So you can't tell me to stay in the Old Testament. For what reason would I stay in the Old Testament, man? Dummy. This is, um, yeah, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Because it's basically, you have to be very simple if you think this thing is going to work, man. Because we, we basically um, see it right in front of us. Can a, a cat and a dog procreate? No, they have different flesh. Can a fish and a lizard procreate? No, they have different flesh. You see? So... They are two different flesh. Can a bird and a, and and a, and a, and, a, and a cow have sex and procreate? No. They are different flesh. 
The Most High didn't create them to have sex with each other. Neither do angels have sex because the celestial has a glory and the, and the terrestrial has a glory. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Starting with verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men. And another of beasts, another of fishes, and other and um, like, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. You see, so if we go into the word terrestrial and celestial, if you go into the Latin. You have the word cielo, which cielo means heaven. Heavenly bodies are different from terrestrial bodies, which terra means earth. So the glory of the celestial, the glory of the body that is in heaven is one, and the glory of the body that is on the earth is one. And they are two different flesh, which means they, don't, they, they, they can't mingle with each other. Just like there is a flesh of man and a flesh of beast. Because if, if it were possible, okay, look, this, this, this chapter is, is describing the different types of flesh. If it were possible for man and beast to mingle with each other, even though they have different flesh, then there would be a lot of half dog, half Edomite, half horse, half Edomites out there nowadays, man, because these Edomites always have sex with animals man they always have they always have bestiality so that's not that's not the case so that shows you that that's not possible yahweh said it the apostle paul is describing it you know that's just what it is man um in the old testament you got angel eating with abraham i believe they can take the form of a man uh, of a man i'm telling you i just i just explained they can portray the form that they are eating but they are not because that's not their glory they have infinite energy they don't have to eat they don't have sex what is the glory because it says verse 40 there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. What is the glory of the celestial? He doesn't have to sleep. He doesn't have to eat. He doesn't have. Uh, 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 he doesn't have sex. You know, he's with the heavenly Father. That's his glory. What is our glory? We are. We are eating. We taste. We taste nice foods. You know. The pleasure of the pleasure of sleep, which uh, the Book of Wisdom of Solomon describes, the pleasure of sleep, which is sex. You know, that's what we have here on the earth. But th that's not the same glory as, as what, the, what, the, what the angels have. So it separates. It separates from each other. And like I said, I already brought out the contradiction of the book of uh, Enoch concerning Noah. That is not even in the same timeline. Noah was already, um, Esau was already dead. Uh, Enoch was already dead. Oh my days. <laughs> exactly. So the celestial, the, the, the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Yeah, I read that. And glory of the moon, the star deferred from another. Verse 41, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star defer it from another star in glory. So verse 41 explains you that, look, you even have different stars. They are different. In that same manner, the Most High has created different things, man. Beasts, uh, men. 
birds, uh, fishes, land, land animals, uh, 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 heavenly bodies, uh, earthly bodies. These all things are separate and di diverse from another. That's in that. Uh, that's why they can't mix with each other. You know. So that whole thing that that is being described in this book, man, is is complete garbage, man. It's contrary to the Bible. Therefore, you can't you can't believe in this book, man. The Book of Enoch. But hey, for this guy on the comment board, man, that that's um. Is talking all these things man let me show you another thing because Esau is the deceiver right Esau deceives true or false Esau is the one that deceives Esau is the devil that the Bible speaks of right he's a deceiver right come Esau is a deceiver now if you read this book you're gonna see the deceivery in it in which he is trying you not to get salvation. Why am I saying this? Let's go to, um, if you have the book of Enoch right there uh, in your house, grab Enoch, the book of Enoch, chapter 40. The book of Enoch, chapter 40, verse 9. And he said to me, this first is Michael, speaking about the angels. This first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering. And the second, who is set over all the diseases and all the wounds of the children of men, is Raphael. And the third, who is set over all the powers, is Gabriel. Okay, sounds fair, right? Could be so. Could be that that is what these angels are being set up over. That, that's, it's, a, it's a possibility. It's not being described in the Bible, but this is a possibility. But now the fourth, that is what's, what's, what's off, man, which is this. And the fourth who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life is named Penuel. Whoa. So wait. The book of Enoch speaks on an angel through which you can have repentance, repentance of sin. And the fourth who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life is named Penuel. So if you can get, uh, if you can um, repent for your sins through Penuel, then why did Shai die then? If there was already an angel, if there was already an angel through whom you get repentance and forgiveness of sins, then why did Jehoshua die for our sins then? Why did Jehoshua die for our, our, our sins if you could already get repentance through Penuel, which the main book, the Bible doesn't even speak of? You know, Moses did speak of Jehoshua, you know. That he was he was gonna die for our sins. It's 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 it's, it's written through all the prophecies, you know. Why are we not saved? Hey, listen, man. I already see what type of dude you are, man. So you are old testament, you are old testament dude. You don't believe in the new testament. Yes or no? You believe in the Old Testament? Uh, you believe in the New Testament? You believe in the New Testament? You believe in Yahweh Shai? Anyway, for the other people that are, you know, focused and not lactose intolerant, because this is, okay, this is, Yeah, and Yahusha can be traced to the old. Yahusha is written throughout the whole Old Testament. Anyway, through Yahusha we can have repentance and forgiveness of sins, and not through Penuel. And if it was were true, then the Bible would have said it. Because what is more important than to have repentance and to have a a, a, um, a path to eternal life? That's very important. 
And if if it were so that it was Penuel, then it, I, it, it would be impossible that only Enoch would have written about it. All the prophets would have written about it then, which the majority of the prophets have written about Yahweh Shai, that he was going to die for our sins. You know, like Isaiah, Moses, you know, they spoke about Yahweh Shai coming. Yahweh Shai is coming, even in Genesis, man. But Penuel is not being spoken of, you know. So now I'm going to show you why this book is so dangerous, man. Why this book is so dangerous for your, for, for your faith, for your belief, man. Let me read that last part again. And the fourth who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life unto those who inherit eternal life is named Penuel. Okay, so through this angel you can get repentance for your sins. And um, yeah, if you want to talk, you can come to the to the Belmer, um, Belmer Station, Belmer Arena. You know, we teach there every Saturday from two to at least seven. You know, yeah, I'm in Rotterdam too, but come to Amsterdam and we can talk there while we are teaching in the highways and byways. That's what we do. Anyway. Um, Continuing with the lesson, so Penuel, according to the book of Enoch, Penuel gives you forgiveness of sins. So there is a very dangerous thing. There's a very dangerous thing that um, that Esau is trying to do with this book, and we're gonna exp and I'm gonna explain it right now. This is Colossians chapter two, verse eighteen. Let no man beguile you of your reward in the voluntary humility and worshipping of angels. Okay, let me read that again. Let me read that again because this is the Bible. We ain't dealing with this toilet paper over here, man. This book is trying to let you worship an angel. Because if you want forgiveness of sins, then you have to go to him and basically worship him. Because he's going to plead the cause then. Just like how Yahweh Shai makes intercession for us. We have to worship him. We have to obey him. You know. We have to be. We have to assure ourselves. With which the word assure means to, to, to try to please one. Try to be friends with one. We have to be like that with Yahweh Shai. Because he is the mediator between us and the Heavenly Father. You know. So if you want repentance for your sins, you would have to worship this, this angel according to the book of Enoch, which is off. So it says, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18, let no man beguile you of your reward. So if we go into the word beguile in the Greek, it says katabreo, katabreo, which means deprive from salvation defraud so through their their deceivery defrauding you believing that this book is is legit they make you to worship an angel man which the bible says don't worship angels in the bible it says that the angel himself says don't bow down to me get up don't worship me i'm thy fellow servant let no man beguile you. What did it mean? Deprived from salvation. So if you add this book to the Bible, if you put your trust and faith in this book, which has all kinds of flaws and, 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 and trips in it, you know, and, and, and uh, contradictions to the Bible, and making you to worship an angel, man, you, you're going to be deprived of your salvation, man. The salvation is, is in Yahweh Shai and not in the book of Enoch. Or in Penuel. Let no man beguile you of your reward. What is the reward? The salvation, the kingdom, making it out of this hellhole. That's the reward. In a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. 
intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. You see? Which that was the book of Enoch is, man. You know, vain. The book of Enoch is vain. And they make you to worship angels, man. Let no man beguile you. That's the point. Now let me go to, um, uh, let me see. Um, Revelations chapter 19. Revelations chapter 19, verse 10. Uh, let me start at 9. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of the Most High. And I fell at his feet to worship him. So John the Revelator fell at the feet of the angel to worship the angel. Because of the visions and the things that he saw, you know, he was very astonished by it. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. The angel himself says, Don't worship me. See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, that have uh, uh, worshipped the Most High. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. You see? So this angel is saying, but listen, don't worry, don't come and worship me, man. I'm thy fellow servant. Meanwhile, the, the book of Enoch says, Panuel can give uh, 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 forgiveness of sins, and through him there is hope, which refers to, to, uh, uh, to, for you to worship him then. You know? Meanwhile, the angel says, don't worship me. The, the book of Colossians says, don't let nobody beguile you into worshiping angels. You got to be very careful, man. You got to be very careful with this book, man. And you already know whose hands are on this book, man. Which is, is the devil, man. That's the, this is a book of the devil, man. You, you have two purposes for this book. You know, in the upcoming times that we are uh, about to go in. One, toilet paper. Two, heat. Start a fire with this shit. Because this is garbage, man. The book of Enoch is garbage. So now let's go to the real, um, the real savior, the man that can give uh, can give you forgiveness of sins. The man whereof the heavenly Father said that he was made greater than the angels. Let me grab that real quick in the book of Hebrews. This is uh, Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter one verse three. Let me start at let me start at one. The Most High, who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom He had appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the world. So Yahusha created heaven, earth, with the angels, you know everything that you see around you who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So Yahushua purged our sins, not Penuel, being made so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Yahweh Shai is the, is the more excellent one than this angel Penuel, man, if he even exists, because the Bible doesn't speak on it. It could be, but, you know, seeing how this book is set up, this book, uh, the book of Enoch, you know, it's, it's, it's probably off too. You know, it's just a made up thing, probably. So, um, Yahweh Shai is being set higher than the angels. You know, through Yahweh Shai, we get forgiveness of sins. He had purged out our sins. You see? Um, so, that was a quick precept that I wanted to 
um, get. This is um, Acts chapter 5, verse 30. The power of our fathers raised up Yahushai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him had the most exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So Yahweh is set up to give forgiveness of sins. Yahweh is, is set up for, for, for the eternal life and, and hope to salvation. That's Yahweh man. That's not the angel. That's not Penuel. Through Yahweh we have hope. The Most High has set up him. You see? Going on, Romans, we go to Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 8, but the most I, but the most I commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Yahushai died for us. While we were yet sinners, Yahushai died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So, what did this book say? Panuel, who is set over the repentance unto hope. We have hope through Yahushai. Because through him, like it said, we will be saved from wrath. Let me read it again. Verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, because Yahweh shall purge your sins, takes away your sins. Yes, we do still sin. Like the guy said. But now Yahweh uh, uh, died for our sins. You know, we are not. Uh, uh, we are now being justified by death. It's like um, um, ju to justify yourself is 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 a thing that that basically can block the the um, the uh, how bad it is for uh, how bad the reason is that you did something. For example, you grabbed some fruit and you ate it. But that fruit was not yours. And then, and then the man says, why you took this fruit? I was very, very hungry. I haven't eaten for five, five six days. He's going to be like, oh, okay, no problem. Unless he's a demon. You know, he's going to be, you, you, with that, what you said, you are being justified for the things that you did. Now, Yahweh Shai, through Yahweh Shai, we are being justified for the things that we do in this flesh, that we did in this flesh. You know, but it is our job to go and sin no more. What did Jehoshaphat tell the woman that committed adultery? Get up and go and sin no more. That's our job, man. To the best of our ability, we need to please ourselves before the Most High, man. Slakya, we need to please the Most High to the best of our abilities, man. You know, we need to assure ourselves before the Most High. That's actually what I wanted to say. We need to do our best to please the Heavenly Father, man. You know, and yes, we continually, we continually go off, man. But we will not be judged by that, man. We will, we will be judged by the faith and the and. Uh, uh, amen. Let me grab it. I open it at the at the right page uh, in one time, man. This is Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the Most High. You see? Not of works, lest any man should boast. You see? So through Yahweh Shai and faith and grace, we will be saved. Not of works, man. You know? Faith without works is dead. You got to do something for it. You got to show your faith by your works. Just like how your mother... Your mother doesn't have to tell you that, that she loves you, man. You, you're supposed to know this, man. And you're supposed to see this. You're supposed to see this, man. She doesn't have to tell you that. You, you ain't supposed to ask that neither, man. You know? 
The love that your mother shows is important. She doesn't have to tell you. You know, you, you're supposed to see that. So the most I can uh, is supposed to see your faith through your works also. You know, because you got people, what they do is this. I don't want to go too much off topic. But um, this is what people do. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. They profess that they know the Most High, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. You see, that's what the people do. That's what a lot of people do. In works they deny Him. When, when the Most High asks a, a certain thing from them, then they don't want to do it. You know, for example, a lot of females out there, the Bible says that you're supposed to cover your head. Why ain't you doing it? Because the Bible also says that the, the hair is the glory of the woman. That's the reason. A woman glorifies herself in her hair, man. That's her pride. You know, but then when the Bible says your hair is given for a covering, then they don't want to do it. You know, so it works. You deny him then. But it's all good. You know, through faith and grace we are saved. But don't only... Worshiping with your mouth. Show what 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 Yahweh Bashem Shai means for you, man. So this is James chapter one, verse twenty-two. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So there's a balance, man. There's a balance, man. You cannot you you deceiving yourself if if you only worship the heavenly Father with your mouth. Meanwhile, there are all kind of things that you can do to please the Heavenly Father with, but you don't want to do it. Okay, going back to the topic, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to the Most High by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in the Most High through our Lord Yahweh Shai. It doesn't say true penal. Because to, according to that book, we get repentance uh, uh, through him. It doesn't say penal. It says through his son Yahweh Shai. By whom we have now received the atonement. You see that? We are being made clean through Yahweh Shai, which Yahweh Shai is the word. How shall a young man cl cleanse his ways? Taking heed to the word, man. Which the word is this, man. What does the Bible, what does the Bible itself say? Read you out of the book and uh, uh, take up the book of the Lord and read. Which is this book, man. What is that? Isaiah 33, because I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. It's messed up, man. This is um, Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of thee shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it had commanded, and his spirit it had gathered them. You see, so if you, if you just take up this book and, and meditate upon this book and, and use this book, then you're not going to fail, man. You know? Keep the things that are written therein, man. The sound things, the right doctrine, which is being taught to you by the, by the men that go in the highways and byways and that preach this word in season and out of season on the internet and outside, man. Um, going on, Romans 8 and 34. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Yahweh Shai that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of the Most High? Who also make it intercession for us? So Yahweh Shai makes intercession for us. Yahweh Shai takes up our, our prayers and he takes them and goes to the Heavenly Father and bids our cause, man. 
Intercession literally means to pray for. So Yahweh Shai takes up our things, our problems, our, 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 the things we are dealing with, and brings them for the Heavenly Father, man. He is the mediator. Like the next scripture is gonna, going to say, Yahweh Shai is the mediator, man. We need Yahweh Shai. We don't need that, that manual that is written in that book, man. We don't need him. We need the Heavenly Father, his son, which is Yahweh Shai. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Yahweh Shai, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to the Most High, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power. And for this cause, he is, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal life. So, before Yahweh was there, we committed sins. So, always when you pray, man, pray for the things that you did in your past life too. Because there is reincarnation in the Bible. So, in your past lives, you did you did things, man. You, you went off. You got to pray for that too. You know? Pray for the sins that you don't know of. And how do you pray to that? To Yahweh Basham Yahushai, man. Because through Yahweh Basham Yahushai, we, we, we get forgiveness for those, man. For those things. Pray for the sins that you don't know of. Ask for forgiveness for the sins that you don't know of. Ask for the sin, forgiveness for the sins that you might do in the future. That you might do tomorrow. But do ask for forgiveness, man. Don't do things... Without without asking for forgiveness from the from the heavenly Father, man, to His Son, try to please the heavenly Father to the best of your ability. So, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which uh, are called might receive the promise of eternal life. You know. So, uh, what did Yahusha take away? The sins that we did before. You know. He cleaned us up, basically. We was full of sin. He cleaned us up. Go and sin no more. Try try not to sin, but we still do. You know? But through Yahweh Shai, this is what's being done, man. And in Dutch, they say it's being seen through the fingers. It's it's taken with 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 a bit of salt. It's not it's not that big of a deal unless you are doing it intentionally. You know that you're about to sin. You know that you're going off. You know that you, you're being wicked as fuck, man. You know? So, going on. You see, I said it was going to be a long lesson. It's a long lesson, man. Um, but I think I'm going to skip that one and wrap it up uh, with the last one. Which they see, this book says that the angels can't see the face of the Heavenly Father. This is Enoch. Enoch 14. It's like I'm all, all over the place, man. Enoch 14. 14 and 21. None of the angels could see. It's like none of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory. And no flesh could behold him. So the book of Enoch says the angels cannot behold the face of the heavenly father. Let's see what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 verse um, 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you. That in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven. But wait, the book of Enoch says the angels cannot see the face of the heavenly father. You know, very, very plain and simple, but this is just what it is, man. This this book is that book is full of garbage, man. Let me read it again. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven. Their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Let me read this again. 
which represents the angels are always that they're there for you. You know, for the humble and the meek. Enoch chapter 14 verse 21. None of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory and no flesh could behold him. None could enter before the throne. But meanwhile, the book of Ezra says this. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 8 verse 20. O Yahweh, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which be, beholdest from above things in heaven and in the air, whose throne is inestimable, inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, before whom the host of angels stand, before whom the host of angels stand with trembling, whose surface is conversant in wind and fire, whose word is true, and sayings constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance uh, fearful. You see, so the angels stand before the heavenly Father, man. The angels stand before the most, uh, for the Most High, and they behold His face. Book of Enoch says they can't see His face. Now let me let me go into it anyway, you know, because this this video I want this video to be compact concerning this Book of Enoch. You know, maybe if the spirit hit me, I will go into it another uh, another time uh, and research some more, see some more cuts, some more contradictions, which I didn't really spend that much time on reading. But the time that I did spend was enough time to find that this book is, is not legit, man. Enoch's journeys through the earth and Sha'ul, Sha which is Shawa'al in the Hebrew. So this book speaks on hell. I have to I have to go and read that later. Let me mark it real quick so I don't forget. Which hell doesn't exist, man? The hell that the hell that um, these Greek mythologies speak on that doesn't exist, man. So, um, um, this is the book of Enoch, chapter 22, titled Sheol, Sheol, or the Underworld. And thence I went to another place, and he showed me in the west another great and high mountain, and of hard rock. And there was in it four hollow places, deep and wide and very smooth. How smooth are the hollow places and deep and dark to look at. And there were four hollow places in it, deep and very smooth. Three of them were dark and bright, and there was a fountain of water in in its midst, in its midst, a slacker, in its midst. And it said, How smooth are these hollow places and deep and dark to view? And Raphael answered, One of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, these hollow places have been created for this very purpose that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Yea, that all souls of the children of man should assemble here. And so, so this is, it says that there is a place where all souls are being assembled. And these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment until their appointed period, till the period appointed till the great judgment comes upon them. Um, now, if we jump to verse um, 11, let me jump to verse 10. And this has been made for sinners, been made uh, uh, this, and this has been made for sinners. When they die and are buried in the earth, judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirit shall be set apart 
in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and re retribu uh, re ret retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make it disclosures concerning their destruction when they were slain in the days of sinners. So here it says that the spirits are being separated. Some go go to the uh, some go to hell. Some go to heaven. Meanwhile, the Bible says all spirits go back to the heavenly Father who gave them. Let me go to First um, Samuel chapter twenty. First Samuel chapter twenty. Okay, 28. 1 Samuel chapter 28, starting with verse 15. Uh, what happened here was um, um, uh, King Saul summoned uh, Samuel, who, who, was, who died already. He summoned him, you know, to inquire what, what happened. Why didn't he get no dreams, no prophecies no more? First uh, Samuel chapter 28, verse 15. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou dis discredited me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and the, and the Most High is departed from me, and answered me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou may, mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore dost thou ask of me, seeing Yahweh is departed from thee, and has become thine enemy? So, so Saul, at that at that time, King Saul was the enemy of the Most High. The Most High didn't deal with him no more. The Most High departed from him. Keep that in mind. And Yahweh had done to him as he spake by me, for Yahweh had rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor even to David, because thou obeyest not the voice of Yahweh, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore had Yahweh done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, Yahweh will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow, this is the point, and tomorrow shall thou and thy sons be with me. Yahweh also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. So this is the point. The righteous prophet Samuel, who was with the heavenly father, he already passed away and he was with the heavenly father in the spiritual realm, in the heavens. He tells wicked King Saul, whom became the enemy of the heavenly father, who sinned before the heavenly father continually. He told him, listen man, will you die? No, end of the day, you're going to be with me because you're going to die, you and your sons. So that shows you that even though King Saul was a sinner and even though he was the enemy of the Heavenly Father, he was still going to be where the righteous man Samuel was. Because all spirits go back to the Heavenly Father who gave it, man. You see? Souls are not being separated like it says in the book of Enoch. And I don't want it to lay on my apocrypha, man. For real, man. This, this is not, this is not good for you, man. This book, it's not good for you. This is Ecclesiastes three and twenty. Um, all go unto one. Let me start at nineteen. For that which befallen the sons of man befallen beasts, we both die. Even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they all, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go unto one place, all are of the dust, and all shall return to the dust again. 
Whoso know, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of beast that goeth downward to the earth. You see, so the spirit of man goes upward, always, man. You always go to the heavenly father, man. Your spirit always goes to the heavenly father, whether you wicked or righteous, man. And like it says here, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, uh, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, our bodies, because you're going to be buried. And it stays here. It doesn't go into the kingdom. It doesn't go into the heavens. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. You see? So this, this book describes a place, Sheu, she, which in the Hebrew is Shawa'al, which just means grave, man. It just means grave. If, if you go to Shawa'al, that means your body is being put in a grave. Man, I'm using my phone to record. Go and look up the word grave in the Hebrew. It says Shawa'al. You know? There ain't no hell. So yeah, man, with that, the book of Enoch basically debunked in a life lesson. You know, if there uh, are any more questions concerning this, put it in the comment board. You know, I'm going to uh, do more research, of course, and uh, and check it out, man. And with that, I'm going to say, Kala Layim, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai Basham, Rakakadash. Shalom to the elect. Shalom.